Hi and welcome to Buffy Designs. I'm Buffy and I have a few thrifted patriotic DIYs for you that I hope you will enjoy. And I've been wanting to find some more thrifted items that I could transform into patriotic DIYs. So stay tuned to the end to see how they all turned out. This first thrifted DIY is this bust of a, an eagle and it's a Hanson classic that someone gave um, to somebody else in 1990 or they received it then and I paid two dollars for it. They had some kind of plaque on the front and that wasn't there when I purchased. So we're going to transform it. So I'm showing you here where there are some marks that after cleaning it, it still didn't come clean. So don't be mad at me for doing what I'm going to do to this <laughs> piece. So originally I got the hair dryer out and I thought, oh, this is going to come off super easy once I heat it up and scrape it off. But it was a bit difficult. I used my vinyl scraper because I didn't want to scrape the wood. I thought I was going to leave the finish the way it was, but this just didn't work. So after I got the spongy part of that sticky thing off, I kind of scraped as, as good as I could and it was still there. So I looked up some homemade tricks um, to do and they said to use vegetable oil and I thought, hmm, let's try some Pam. And then they also said to try to use alcohol or I didn't have any alcohol, so I'm using alcohol wipes. And this actually worked surprisingly well with the two of them together. So I just sat and scrubbed on that and it took, you know, a little bit of rubbing, but it ended up coming right off. It's a pretty awesome hack to have at home if you don't have goo gone, and it's probably more inexpensive to use this since you've already got it, you know, using it for cooking or whatever. <laughs> so once I got it completely off, I wiped it down, and then I did end up washing it with some uh, dish soap and water just to make sure it was, uh, the residue was totally gone. And it looks pretty awesome. So now I'm taking some masking tape and getting it as close as I can around the base of the eagle. And then I realized that it is a little bit of a lip that goes under it, so I kind of tucked it underneath to make it easier and just went all the way around with the tape. So now that it's all taped up, I have this uh, gold metallic uh, paint from, uh, I think it's folk art and it is such a pretty color and it goes on so well. It's acrylic paint. Did I say that already? <laughs> so I'm just going completely all over the bust of this, everywhere that's white, I'm using this gold. It just went on so super pretty. And I did do two coats. So now I have this acrylic um, apple barrel black paint and I'm just using a real fine brush and I'm going through each little nook and cranny of the feathers and the eyes, the nose everywhere. So I'm just trying to highlight all of those little indents with this black paint. And then I kind of rubbed it off a little bit, um, worked in, in sections and kind of rubbed it but then I figured I could just go over it with the gold paint because it covered so well. So that's what I'm doing here. But my original thought was to try some antiquing wax and that was a fail. I did not like how that turned out. So the black does turn out so much better and it it's a lot of meticulous little here and there and it did take me longer than I thought but it turned out so so pretty. And here I'm just touching up a few other spots that I covered up too much with the gold and just making sure all of those little indents are in there and then retouching up with the gold on top and just blending that all together. So now I'm just taking some matte Mod Podge and I'm just going over the whole eagle to seal that paint in. And after it sat overnight, look how pretty that looks. And now I'm just removing the tape because I'm going to do something different to the base. 
So the reason why I chose um, to paint it, and I'm using folk art chalk paint here, is because of that front piece still showed evidence of shadowing of where that sticky tape was. So I'm just uh, taking this and trying to be very careful around the edge of the gold so that I don't get it on that and just covering this up. I only gave this one really good coat uh, of the paint because when I distressed this I wanted that wood to kind of come through on the corners and it just turns out so pretty and the black I think matches the highlights of the gold in the eagle so well and so much better than that brown. So I didn't paint the bottom because I, I wanted to have that uh, felt pieces on the bottom still. So I left that alone and I just did the top portion and the sides. So I took it outside and I used my sander to just sand the corners and the sides and a little bit of like across the tops of the painted part but not enough to show you know like see through to the wood i just wanted it to look somewhat distressed i'm using the rust-oleum clear coat spray on this because it gives a matte finish and it just goes on so much better on the wood than with the mod podge i didn't want any streak marks on it so you just want to be careful and not to overspray too much, uh, otherwise it clumps up and it will run and you don't want that. So I found these uh, rustic stars and I washed off the rust part as much as I could and let it dry. And I'm using the same gold as the eagle and just painting this star. And I'll have the link to the stars from Amazon in my description. So after I let it dry, I'm just sanding down the raised parts so that it will look really pretty distressed. And you want to always dust it off with a rag or something once you've got it distressed. So now I'm taking the front of this and I'm going to glue that star right on the front. And it just turned out so pretty. I just love it. I keep saying so pretty, but... <laughs> I just really love how this turned out, especially how it started, and I loved it then. Um, that's why I picked it up, and I thought by doing all of this, it just makes it more patriotic. My next thrifted DIY is already patriotic. It is a flag holder but I am going to spruce it up and I hope you really like it after I get done with it. So I didn't want to really do much to this. Um, I figured it's black already. That's the color I wanted it and I'm not going to repaint it. So I just went out and distressed everywhere and just sanded down all of the painted parts. So it looked more distressed than shiny or anything. So again, some of those stars that I purchased, this one's a large one like the one that I had on the Eagle, but I'm using ivory chalk paint from Folk Art and I wanted it to be kind of more rustic uh, colors. That's why I chose the ivory. And this really makes it look so pretty. And just the color just is really vibrant. So I'm taking this Imperial Red um, chalk paint and I'm mixing a little bit of the um, antiquing wax with it and I first did just a tiny bit and it didn't work and then I'm so used to the thicker paint I poured more in and it was like whoa too much <laughs> so I kind of made sure it was off to the side and just mixed in what I wanted and the color turned out perfect um, doing this so if you want more of a barn red kind of color, this is a perfect way to mix it. So I did the same to this star as I did, and it's a smaller star, as I did to the white one. Just painted it all and uh, distressed it after it dried. So in order to get the color of blue that I want, I'm using this Folk Art Flat Deep Marine color, as well as Folk Art Cayman Blue. Those are both really pretty blues on their own but just not the color that I'm looking for for this project. So I mixed that together and it still was not giving me what I 
anticipated. And so then I ended up getting uh, some of my apple barrel uh, bright blue and mixed that in with it. And that is what made it exactly what I wanted. So then I did exactly the same thing, just painted it and let it dry and distressed it. So now I'm taking the flag stand and measuring how long the base is and it's about 24 inches. So we need to be right center for 12 and that's exactly where the screw is that goes into the two pieces, which isn't always the, the, uh, the fact. So I <laughs> wanna make sure I'm getting it in the center. So now I'm gluing the white star with some Gorilla hot glue onto the center part. And now I'm just checking to see exactly where I wanna put the little stars and I thought it'd be cute just down below. So I'm just gluing them both on each side. So now I'm kind of measuring where I want to put the two flags that I'm using and it's about 12 spots up and I have these flowers from Dollar Tree, they're carnations that I thought were really cute and then these I had in my stash, they're just some small little roses that are red, white and blue and I think you can find them pretty much anywhere, I think Walmart sells that style. And so I'm just going to cut these down and put them in the center, at least the Dollar Tree ones. And I thought it was really cute to kind of dress it up this way and that it kind of looked like um, fireworks in the center. <laughs> I don't know. That's just how my mind works. So I'm just going to cut each separate um, flower off of the grouping that it's hooked to. And I grouped them together and they fit perfectly in the middle hole there. And I was amazed that it worked out just the way I wanted. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take the larger flowers on here, the more bloomed looking flowers, and cut down to the end of it because I'm going to use part of that, that wire stem for it to hold inside of the, each hole. So I'm taking it off for now and then taking that big leaf out of there and putting it back onto the stem. And then I'm going to put the larger ones closer to the big flowers here and do red, white, and blue. And I'm gonna repeat that with each of these colors. So now I'm doing the same for the small ones. On the outer side, I'm doing red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue. So I didn't want my flags to be bright white and I wanted to kind of tone them down some. So I boiled some water and I got this tea on Amazon. I don't drink this kind of tea, but I wanted black tea in order to tea dye them. And um, I used two bags at first, but then I had to add another one to make it the color I wanted. But the trick I've found is don't let it cool down and then put your fabric in. You want to put it in while it's hot. So I had to boil it up again and put it in a flat pan because I didn't want to take the fabric off of the sticks um, and then have to try to get them back on. So I just thought it might even benefit the sticks to tea dye them as well, which it did, and it made it look more worn and not so bright. So now I'm just going to go through each flower and glue them down into the holes, except for the large ones. They stood fine and they won't come out because it's tight, but I did all the small flowers. So now that the flags are all dried, you can tell the difference uh, because they were the same fabric as the ones that I used as placeholders in the flag holder. You can tell the difference here. So now I'm just changing those out. Mm -hmm. 
My next thrifted DIY is a flag that I'm going to make with this spindle and I'm painting it just with some regular white um, chalk paint because the fabric that I'm going to use as the flag is a bright white uh, and mixture of white so I want the base to be white. Then I took it outside and sanded just to make it look distressed in certain spots and then it just looked really pretty. I had this leftover fabric from last year when I made some flag pillows and I thought this would be perfect for this project. So I'm just going to cut strips, actually just start the strip and then just rip it so it's rustic, rough edges kind of thing. So I did, I believe, I can't even remember how many strips, but I did a bunch. And you can do it, do it different depending on your spindle or if you have a dowel and how long it is because you'll need um, different amounts for different size dowels or spindles. I also had some leftover already stripped uh, white pieces and some lace uh, fabric that I'm going to use for this that was already cut for a different project that I never finished. <laughs> And so I'm just going to tie these in a knot at the top so that they're long enough to hang down. So here you can see I've gone clear across and I'm kind of just alternating the red and white striped, then the white fabric, and then the off-white uh, lace fabric, and just finished it off that way. So now I'm taking this same blue striped fabric that I had left over, and I'm measuring where I want to put like the blue part of the flag, if that makes sense. And so I'm just measuring here where I want to do it and then I'm going to cut it on that area and then rip it like the rest of it so it's got the jagged edges. So I took that fabric and ironed it down so it didn't have that crease in it and now I'm just using some Gorilla hot glue around the edges and just like that X in the center. And I'm just gonna stick it to the left top corner and make sure that last strip is underneath the fabric and glued down to it. So then I had this doily um, that was a full doily and I cut this piece out because it already had been cut out. I found it at a yard sale and I thought it looked really cute for like the star portion of the flag. This is what this uh, doily looks like and it has these little pieces that connected it together and I'm just trying to carefully uh, cut that piece out because I thought that would be awesome as a star or look like fireworks sitting next to it. I ended up using two of them, one on each opposite corner, like the one lower and then one on the, the top left. To hang it, I just got some twine and I doubled up on it and uh, just tied it to each side for the hanger. Now you can use ribbon, you can use more of the striped fabric or white fabric or lace. You could use just about anything for this. And I think I will change mine up to have like um, some white or off-white lace because I think it looks a little plain this way. And here I'm just gluing those little star things that I told you about. And it's finished. It looks so cute.
I just love how everything turned out. I hope that you loved it too. And if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching my videos. I'm trying to get monetized, so I hope that you will like and share my videos to all your family and friends so that I can hopefully continue to bring you more of these videos. If you didn't like my video, please let me know why and I can work harder at getting better content out to you. I just love patriotic decor. I love America. I love our land. And I hope that you are inspired to do some different types of uh, thrift flip type items for any holiday or any decor for your home. So that being said, I am so grateful for you all and I hope that you all will have a wonderful day.